Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the information session for the online certificate in health terminology standards. This is a um, micro credential offered by the School of Health Information Science in partnership with the Division of Continuing Studies at the University of Victoria. My name is Simon Mitchell, and I'm the faculty coordinator for this program. Um, and just before we begin, I'd like to state that uh, I acknowledge and respect the Lekwungen peoples on whose traditional territory the university stands, and the Sanjis, Esquimalt, and Wasanich peoples whose historical relationships with the land continue to this day. Right. Um, Okay, so in the next 15 minutes or so, uh, I won't keep you very long. Uh, we'll provide some information on the certificate program and uh, let you know how it can help advance your career. And please note that uh, as we've already started, we are recording this session, at least the presentation portion of it. And we'll stop the recording before we begin any uh, questions and answers. Okay, so in the meantime, if you do have any uh, uh, questions, please type them in the chat box, or I'll do my best to keep an eye on the participant list. Um, type it in the chat box or raise your hand and uh, we'll have a quick discussion. Or if you prefer, you can leave your questions or comments to the end. Okay, so um, what's the certificate program? Um, well, in 2018, the School of Health Information Science at the University of Victoria introduced the certificate program in health terminology standards. Um, there are two streams in the program, the graduate stream and the professional stream. Both streams, you should know in advance, these two, both streams lead to the same certificate. Okay. All right, the requirements for admission to the program um, vary depending on which stream you are applying to. Okay, so uh, one, the first is the graduate stream I'll talk about. It requires you to have a four year baccalaureate degree from an accredited institution. Uh, and if you do not have a baccalaureate, I mean a BSc, for example, uh, then you may be eligible to join our professional stream. Professional stream requires you to have a health information management diploma and two or more years of related work experience in healthcare. Now, there are um, a few little details in there that we won't discuss at the moment, but if you don't feel you fit either of those, please feel free to raise it uh, at the end. Of the session. Okay, the curriculum for both streams is the same. So it doesn't matter which one you're in, you're going to get the same uh, education out of the program. And it's a one year part time program with four courses of weekly virtual classes and a virtual workshop in May. Students who graduate from the certificate program will be eligible to apply for the Certified Terminology Standards Specialist credential, known as the CTSS. We're starting to see some of these on uh, job advertisements from industry. And the CTSS comes from the Canadian College of Health Information Management, or the CCHIM, which is part of CHIMA, the Canadian Health Information Management Association. <clears throat> and it's worth mentioning because CHIMA has a membership of around uh, 4,000 practicing health information management professionals across Canada. Okay, now let's talk about the courses involved in the certificate program. Okay, this is an overview uh, and it's jointly delivered by <clears throat> faculty, uh, adjunct faculty and industry partners such as Accenture, the Canadian Institute for Health Information, CHI-I, RKL Informatics, Ontario Health and Canada Health InfoWay. They all contribute to uh, the, the lessons and lectures in the program. Okay. There are four courses in the Health Terminology Standard Certificate Program. They're shown here on the screen. The first course is uh, has the course code HINT535. This is Health Information Standards. It's your introductory um, detailed course to begin the program. It's completed over 13 weeks and it begins in September. HINT535 introduces you to a, uh, different types of terminology standards for capturing clinical events things like diagnoses, findings, assessments, medications, and also for data exchange to facilitate sharing information, patient information particularly, through electronic uh, means. Okay, there are hands-on learning activities and term papers so that you can apply the concepts you learned to uh, real cases. HINT 535 is co-taught 
uh, by subject matter experts from Accenture and Kaihai, as well as uh, faculty from the department here. The second course is 536, a course on controlled terminology standards. HINT 536 is also completed over a 13-week period beginning in January. During HINT 536, you will learn more about specific terminologies, such as SNOMED CT, which is a reference terminology for diagnoses, <clears throat> clinical findings, body sites, organisms, and on and on. And most of things in healthcare can be described using SNOMED CT. It's vast. You'll learn how SNOMED terminologies are used to create subsets, extensions, cross maps, and how it's even used to query patient records. We'll also learn about how to implement and support these terminologies in health organizations. The third course of the four is HINT 537 called Health Information Exchange Standards. Okay, HINT 537 is taught in a compressed format. It's not uh, done the same way as the other two. In addition to weekly online courses, sorry, um, uh, it's taught over six weeks and it begins in April. Okay, and it consists again of weekly online classes and a virtual workshop, often in the third week of May. In 537, we'll introduce you to real life standards based healthcare applications and case studies uh, for such areas as immunization, medication, imaging, lab tests, and clinical reports. The emphasis of HINT 537 is on the appropriate use of terminology standards in these healthcare applications. The course is co taught by subject matter experts from Ontario Health, Accenture, InfoWay, and Kai High. I mentioned that HINT 537 is in a compressed format. It's held during the summer term and it is followed immediately by uh, the fourth course, HINT 597, which is the final course in the series. The whole uh, program takes a year. Okay, HINT 597 is a capstone course in which you'll complete a field project uh, within a three month period, it runs from June through to August. The field project allows you to apply what you have learned in the previous three courses to work on practical on a practical terminology related project. The courses include evening seminar series in June and uh, discusses the latest developments in health information standards. And is also uh, these seminars that appear throughout this, this series are um, just great. <laughs> I can't overstate them enough. Okay, again, the uh, health industry experts come in to do it. So you might be asking, well, what is the capstone project all about? And so we have, um, I have a bunch of words coming up on this and I'll try to break it down. Typically you're given a topic or you choose a topic rather that's framed within the standards life cycle. Uh, so the standards development life cycle. Okay, and this covers uh, needs, identification, specification and development. If you're uh, familiar at all with the software development life cycle, it's similar but uh, tailored to the development and deployment of standards. Okay, so here's some examples of uh, HINT 597 field projects. Um, there's a really wide range. Uh, you could do a requirements uh, analysis or try to do a elicitation for requirements of specific terminologies. You could do a literature review on a specific terminology for a health organization. You can perform an analysis of local clinical terms, provided that you have uh, the suitable coverage for this in terms of ethics and uh, access to data. Um, and many more. Let me just uh, fill out the, the screen here for you. Uh, you could do a mapping project where you're mapping local drug terms or perhaps even analyzing the, the gamut of a particular standard. So the standards tend to be vast. How much of the standard is used in, in your particular um, your particular health authority, for example. You could do a literature review on SNOMED CT from an educational point of view. You can create uh, an implementation plan, for example. This would all be based on evidence, whether the evidence is um, from databases or from the literature. So there's quite a bit um, of variety. This, I know there's a lot of words on this slide, but it's not uh, nearly all the potential possibilities. It's just a few snapshotty ideas. So you're often encouraged to follow your um, what interests you and choose something that uh, that you can relate to and that you have perhaps a passion for. Okay, and you're not uh, dumped on your own. You'll be working with uh, our instructors to ensure the project is relevant and and it's is it realistic that it can be done 
within the three month time period. Okay. Okay, so that's a lot. You do this for a whole year and um, you're wondering, well, okay, I've done all this. How does it help my career? Okay, now you recall that we talked about the CTSS earlier. Uh, CTSS is the Certified Terminology Standards Specialist Credential granted by the uh, CHIMA or the College of Health Information Management. They're the branch that deal with this sort of thing. And it's interesting to just remind you that CHIMA's membership includes 4,000 certified and more than that uh, health information management professionals who work in the health industry. So by completing this course, you have access to gain this credential. If you have this credential, you have access to CHIMA. You can join CHIMA and become one of those uh, members. And that gets you access to their network. And as you <clears throat> probably have already found out, uh, getting um, a, a, your career pushed forward is not only a matter of what you know, it's also very much a matter of who you know. And so gaining access to a professional network is um, a very strong bonus of this program. Okay. Um, yeah, so what can you do? You can work on a variety of standards, health information exchange, interoperable health, electronic health record projects. Uh, they're innumerable. Okay. Often the graduates uh, from this program end up being the go-to people in the organization for things that have to do with uh, specifically with health terminologies and other standards. Uh, often you, you might have heard the term that uh, if you go through something like this, you end up becoming the glue uh, that keeps projects uh, moving and stuck together. Okay. You become a, a bit of a um, specialist within a niche area. And in terms of technology, that is a very good place to be, okay? All right, I think uh, we've covered most of that. Let's talk about a couple of examples of recent initiatives in Canada, just to give you an idea of the kind of um, projects that we might uh, find ourselves involved in. So Canada Health InfoWay uh, um, is, is a very busy organization. They're the national organization that maintains all the terminology standards for Canada. Uh, in terms of health. And these include the uh, uh, codes, for example, needed to document COVID-19 related terms. We had a period before COVID and then we had lots of terminologies and codings for various diseases and a new one shows up, what do we do? Well, it's kind of the health info ways knowledge to uh, job to wrangle this new knowledge and make sure that the standards reflect the reality that's happening in our healthcare systems. Okay, so they dealt with COVID-19 related terms, virus names, clinical conditions, lab tests, treatments, all of those need to be addressed uh, when it comes to standards. And as a terminology specialist, you could help um, for projects like that to maintain the list of these uh, important value sets, make sure they're up to date in the organization's EHR and information systems, for example. Okay, so that's kind of the health info. Another one, is the uh, Pan-Canadian Patient Summary, the, the Canadian specifications for it. Uh, the patient summary uh, overall is a document uh, with essential health information on an individual defined in a way that it can be implemented as an electronic record uh, or extracted for extru secure exchange between organizations. Okay, you have information in one organization, how does it get to the next one without getting uh, mangled or lost? Okay. So that's a patient summary. The Pan-Canadian Patient Summary is based on the International Patient Summary, or IPS. And that's a standard uh, initially developed to support cross-border exchange, so between countries, of personal health information. Things such as allergies, problems, medications, vaccinations, results, procedures, and on and on and on. Some Canadian jurisdictions have started to extend the Pan-Canadian standard to support the regional and local exchange of patient information uh, electronically. Okay, so there is a lot of work in this area. Um, and these, you know, being a terminology specialist, uh, you become a shoe in for projects like this. Okay, uh, at the policy level now, looking at, um, um, I'm sure it's DIHEX, I guess, the Digital Health Information Exchange Regulation. Um, this is in Ontario and it provides the regulatory framework for Ontario health to define and implement health information standards. 
uh, and the requirements for its use in interoperability specifications. So this is an overall effort to ensure that all electronic systems and tools can share patients' information meaningfully across the organization's EHR and information systems. Okay, so these and many other projects, they all need people that have demonstrated knowledge of the standard subject area, okay? So they all need graduates from the certificate program, okay? So let's look at uh, two such graduates. Um, I've anonymized this. So this is RD uh, and she has an MSc and also the CTSS um, accreditation. Works as a management consultant uh, in industry, in healthcare. Okay, and when asked why the UVic certificate program appealed to her, well, she said it offers a deep dive into health terminology standards, which was of interest. It helped her bridge the gap between technical and non-technical people. There's that glue piece again. You know, if, if you are an alum of this program and you know your stuff when it comes to standards and you're working on a project with people that don't know it, then your efforts can really keep the project moving um, and not prevent it from failing, hopefully. Okay. And uh, the fact that uh, she enjoyed the fact, I mean, a management consultant with an MSc, this is a busy person, right? And uh, being allowed to work full time while studying, that's a feature because it's a part time course, is valuable. Okay. And there's a bit more to be uh, read on that. Another one, um, this is a uh, JO, this is a nurse this time who is a certificate alum and does not have an MSc, works as a community coordinator and has uh, is a member of CHIMA, okay? And this person was really interested in health equity. Okay? This is the prime reason why they uh, wanted to get into the program. Health information systems and exchanges are designed, uh, he writes, using international, national, provincial and other standards. As a nurse, health equity and the values of the Canadian healthcare system, such as universality, accessibility, and so on, are not simply ideals. And this is somebody with a, a, a passionate view, right? They are calls to action, okay? The term passion, you might not think, uh, shows up quite frequently uh, within health informatics. Uh, we're all glad to see that. Okay, so through the standards work, uh, he can bring the voice to the marginalized and uh, help create the conditions for equity by working to ensure that the system and structures are inclusive and are diverse, okay? So lots of different backgrounds uh, come through the program. All right, that's what we've got for you so far. So yeah, um, where do I start? How do I get more info? Really your best bet to get more information is to navigate to this website. Um, you all were directed to the website to find the location of this information session. So to get the more information, the, the clearest, most up-to-date information is right back there at that website, okay? We have one website here. I mentioned there were two streams. We have a single site here. Uh, you can see the address there, certificatesindex.phd, uh, UVic, underneath HSD and HINF, okay? And uh, whether you need this stream or that stream is a question largely you can get answered there, okay? The other option to get more information is really to contact myself. I'm Simon. Uh, my email address for the purposes of this program is HTS Health Terminology Standards, HTS Cord, C O O R D at uvic.ca. And uh, I can redirect uh, where you need to go from there. Okay. Um, there is more information uh, under certificates at the UVic website. Uh, you'll find information about the program overview, more about admission requirements, about how to apply the fees, and things like that. If you want to know more about the, the CTSS uh, that you're eligible for, having graduated from this program, you can go to the CCHIM website. CTSS is a bit of a, it's a unique acronym, so simply Googling for that will likely get you to the right place. All right, so um, that's the end of the presentation. I know we whipped through a lot of stuff. Um, I think right now, um, before I, I'm going to have to just turn the recording off. I'm just remembering that, which is unusual 